From the 809 Restaurant and Lounge in the heart of Inwood, New York City, welcome to Inwood Artworks On Air, where we meet the musicians, filmmakers, writers, theater makers, and artists of all stripes who make their home in what we affectionately call Upstate Manhattan. I'm Aaron Sims. I'm Jonathan Bell. And this is Live and Local. It's our podcast dedicated to showcasing the musicians of Upper Manhattan. We talk with them about what they do, and best of all, listen to them perform live in our favorite local venues. Who is joining us today, Jonathan? Aaron, today we welcome singer-songwriter Tatiana Kalko. Tatiana wants to soothe your heart and make you cry at the same time with sincere yet irreverent storytelling and uplifting old world melodies. Born in Belarus and currently residing in New York City, she admits to being influenced by the likes of Anton Chekhov, Leonard Cohen, and the Beatles. A classically trained singer and self-taught guitarist and piano player, Tatiana embraces contemporary sounds alongside her rich Slavic and Jewish heritage. Performing everything from acoustic folk and electropop to jazz standards, French chanson, and Russian and Yiddish classics. Her songwriting was recently featured on the CW show Riverdale and has garnered over 200,000 plays on Spotify. Tatiana regularly performs with the Shoal Band of New York and is an artist in residence with the nonprofit UR2 Global. She is currently working on a Kojeko Blueprint Fellowship Community Oral History Project dedicated to capturing the stories of Russian Jewish seniors through original music. We are thrilled to have her today on Live and Local. Without further ado, Tatiana Kalko. All right. This first song is called OK, I Give Up. It's from my EP that I released last year. Love, you screwed me up again I chased your tail into a dead end I thought you were a barrel of luck Not an uninvited house guest on drugs You're throwing shots from Bunker Hill And you want mercy still Okay, I give up Just let me live already Until the day I marry you says to walk away focus on yourself if love is real and worth the way I'm not going anywhere perhaps it's wrong to tell you off good men are say I shouldn't scoff at love you probably know a lot more than I What natural laws do I dare defy? Oh, at first we were holding hands and now we're wrestling Okay, I give up, just let me live already Until the day I marry you Mother says to walk away, focus on yourself If love is real and worth the wait, I'm not going Oh, I see you when you see me We draw our weapons at the count of three Will I make it out alive? I'll leave that for you to decide I'm playing with the big guns And they're all shooting blanks Okay, I give up Just let me live already Until the day I marry you Okay, I give up Just let me live already Until the day Until the day All I want To marry you Alright, uh, this next one is a single I just released. It's called Cameron. Um, it's about someone that I uh, actually met and um, 
a stranger and we had a conversation and this is uh, his story. Cameron, I'd like to help you do your thing I can no more about you share with me your life story cause you know you won't see me again i oh, won't do but there's this girl i love she left me dry and made me cry she's seeing other guys i haven't slept in three days i shut up last night for the first time in a long time i was Feeling alone, no place to go but down I've been living in construction sites Metal poles and rusty pipes I wanna lay my head on a pillow Say, do you know? But never mind, I'll be alright Cameron, I'd like to help you do a thing I can no more about you or share with me your misery cause you know you won't see me again the chemicals in my blood cause a rush a rush of dopamine but it ain't me no it ain't me cause all that happiness eludes me in short and in conclusion, I'm a wreck, I'm a mess, I'm a junkie. Ah, oh, look me up, send me a postcard. I'm in Southampton, Montauk, Cameron. Ah, oh, Cameron. Keel over, I've heard that's a sign. New York City, hard on a pity, but I see the great potential in your bloodshot eyes as the sweat drips down your back on the A track. Uh That was wonderful. Thank you so much. It's great to have you here on air, on air Tatiana. How are you? Thanks, Aaron, Jonathan. It's, uh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me here. Well, uh, could you please tell us what you just played for us? Okay, so the first song there was, um, was I'm already blanking what I played. <laughs> if love is here to stay, then... <laughs> It, it means yeah. it doesn't go somewhere. Okay, it's, it's not called going okay, any. I give up. That, hopefully that <laughs> reminded you. It's like once I'm done with it, right. I'm done with it. No, but it's called Okay, I Give Up. And right. then I played Cameron, which right. is the new single that I have out. Mm -hmm. okay. Awesome. awesome. Um, well, yeah, great songs. Love the lyrics. Love the um, briefly talking um, uh, the other time about your um, – the forms of your songs that mm -hmm. I've noticed and uh, the melodies it's got like a, and I mean this in only the best, I guess it, I don't know if there's other senses of this, but it's old fashioned in all the ways that I love mm -hmm. about the craft of songwriting mm -hmm. um, that in some ways I feel has been a little lost. Mm. Um, but um, anyway, I love the storytelling. 
Thank and the, you. And the imagery and and uh, and the, the form. So. Yeah, I don't think I could tell stories in any other way or in any other form. It's something that it comes naturally to me. I'm not like sitting down and being like, this has to be an AABA song and this is right. where the bridge has to be. Right, right, right. It's kind of like I grew up listening to all of that. Like I, I actually learned to play guitar with a Beatles fake book, you know, mm -hmm. I, I learned all those A minor sevens and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, and I just, I did listen like on the radio and classic rock. They had like the Beatles every Sunday with all this rare, you know, mm -hmm. I just, I was like a big beetle head. And then, and then I got into, I got into pop a lot, uh, with like sort of the Backstreet Boys. I'm in that era. Right. right. <laughs> and, um, but honestly their song structures are super like tight. Right. And, and super flowing and like, they really yeah. tell the story. Yeah. Um, and then I, I got really into Coldplay and, and then Radiohead. Um, so I, I guess I explored different and then more recently, just more like kind of everything but jazz and and yeah. and you're a classically trained singer. Uh yes. Like I can you talk a little bit about that background if you sure. Know? Was so I went to public school in Philadelphia mm -hmm. and um they actually had a really great music program. I was starting uh to play alto saxophone in uh when I was 10 in fifth grade and I had private instruction every week. Uh, we were, we had, you know, the orchestra, um, through middle school, through high schools and jazz band, marching band. Um, then, then I did choir. I was in all city choir as well. Um, and then I also had a private teacher when I was around 14, 15, it was, um, my mom's friend, another Tatiana, who's an opera singer also from Belarus. Um, <laughs> So, so we did, um, like off Maria, we did, we did, we did a lot of, uh, vocalizing, right. A lot mm -hmm. of different exercises. And I just mm -hmm. love that stuff. Like, mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I think my, my voice is, is an instrument, on, you know, like anything else. And it's something that takes upkeep and it's yep. something that, um, I actually took a long time to explore because, you know, I, I guess with any instrument, you kind of have to synthesize like who you are with that instrument mm -hmm. and, and get a unique style. Mm -hmm. Um, but with voice, especially like it's so personal and you go through different phases with it as you, right. as you grow, get older. And, um, so after high school, well in high school, I was doing a lot of musicals okay. and I was like lead in, in a lot of different high school musicals. Right. And, um, but yet, so we did the sound of music and I actually played Maria. So that's kind of like a, you know, old school, like classic, more, more classical. It's a very legit sense. sound. Exactly. It's a legit sound. And so in order to, when I was applying for school, I was applying to um, acting school actually. And I applied to NYU and, you know, they had, um, they had a musical theater program and I just didn't feel myself like a musical theater mm -hmm. singer, you know, like I could do the legit, but I wasn't, I don't know. I just didn't connect with it. And then I didn't really connect to opera. I'm like, well, that's not, mm. I don't want to sing that either. And mm. I didn't really, I didn't realize that like contemporary music was something that I could do. Mm -hmm. um, even though I was, I was just starting to write my own music, but it wasn't mm. something I was taking seriously or really showing to anyone. That was in your late high school, early college. Exactly. Like late, yeah. Late high, and then throughout college as well. So I actually, when I applied to NYU, I got into the, it was like a straight acting program mm -hmm. for at least Strasburg, mm -hmm. um, through and film Institute. So I, I studied there, um, and now I'm just forgetting what the question was. Oh, but it was the, yeah, it was exactly. So I think I answered the question. <laughs> yeah. And I think there's a great. <laughs> Very thoroughly. Yeah, uh, and, and to your point about classical training and music as well. Uh, and I like, I was my comment from hearing particularly Cameron as well mm. um, with the repetitive, the, the recall, the chorus, obviously, and mm -hmm. reaching out to, there's a, it, I, there's such a legit moment moments in your voice that are just on tone and on note the entire time. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're going all over your range. Mm -hmm. It's like a, it's a, it's a real, you're hitting the solid middle of the note with the emotion. And it's a really, it's a really simple sounding. It's not, you're not belting it. You're not mm -hmm. a belter. Mm -hmm. It's, it's so it's something to be said about. It's just, it's a nice, just on toned, wonderful mm. emotive connection to getting your story through your mm -hmm. instrument, which I found really refreshing because we have a lot of the, the, we'll call it the wow moments for a lot of singers who try to overpower you with the dynamics of their voice. Not to say that your voice isn't dynamic <laughs> at all, uh, but uh, it's just really great how um, combining your voice 
with your songwriting. And I have to say the Beatles do favor in major with those chord progressions being repeated, those four, three, four, four <laughs> chords re re being replaced yeah. in that order. And you're combining the melody of those chords with the melody of your songs. They, 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 they meet incredibly well. You've done a really great job with that. Thank you. I, I, I can't, I don't know who I can thank for that because I don't really try to do that, but it just kind they of do. They it marry. comes out. It marries and it's not so it's subtle. It's not, I don't think it doesn't hit you over the head like this is the chord and this is the melody. Like they kind of work mm -hmm. um together. And that's just the sound that I generally gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. I do like kind of dissonant sound sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I, I just I yeah, I play um with something really pleasing, memorable melodies. I think mm -hmm. that is so important. Those stand the test of time. And I've always wanted to just create timeless songs. Right. Um, and I, I thank you, Aaron, for that comment. I really, because that's definitely what I'm going for is just the the emotion, like getting the emotion across um, from when I wrote it, what I was feeling. And then now, you know, that's kind of where the acting comes in because mm -hmm. every time you perform it, it's a little bit different. You enjoy performing? I do enjoy performing. Okay. Like, I feel like I just kind of, <clears throat> you know, let out something. Yeah. Good. Just singing that's, now because um, something Your in the moment. Your energy is up a few notches. Yes. I yeah. feel yeah, much yeah, I more could, alert. No, I, I, <laughs> I think I bring that up because sometimes for some songwriters, performing is an unfortunate mm. duty. Right. You know, and they, they, they're more in the types that want to hide away and write their songs and would rather not have to perform, but they realize they need to, you know. But yeah, you definitely seem to enjoy it. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, it's a question I sometimes ask songwriters. I always find it interesting because I feel like most songwriters land on one side or the other. Um, do you find that at the initial moment of inspiration um, or when an idea for a song first hits you, does it come more from the lyric side or does it come from a mm -hmm. melodic or chord side? Like what, what gets the ball rolling? Mm -hmm. And I, I partly say that because as a songwriter, my side dabble that, dabble in that myself i get out quite a bit in front of myself with the harmony side and i mm -hmm. find myself i love words but i'm always catching up to my musical ideas with the words mm -hmm. which can sometimes be a problem when it's i'm trying to force words into a melody that i've just fallen in love with as opposed to letting the words yes spell out the melody yeah, and so absolutely. i kind of I'm, I'm confessing here. I, I, I tend to, I, I envy songwriters who start with words. Mm. I'm wondering where you are. You sound like my, my dad. He's an amateur songwriter, but he has like <clears throat> countless melodies and never any <laughs> words, you yeah. know. But, um, well, for me, I think it's, it's really anything I can get. Um, I don't, well, there's usually like a, a feeling that wells up from within. It's kind of like, I know I've heard like Fiona Apple talk about it. It's like a sort of a pregnancy mm -hmm. where you're just like building, building, building to that like 99%. You're just like about to, to mm -hmm. burst. But until then, you know, you have to have the life experiences and whatever else, mm -hmm. the inspiration from your exter external, right. internal mm -hmm. environment to to feel like you're ready to give birth to a song, right? And then before that, it's like, I don't even touch it. I'm not even going to push it. Huh. Um, so sometimes I just, I just can just feel that mm -hmm. sort of like a weird biological clock. I don't know what it is. Maybe mm -hmm. it's a female intuition, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a feeling. It's like, okay, I, I need to stop everything. I need to like sit at a piano. I need to do something because something's going to come out right now. Right. Um, and when that does, I try to marry the two, to be honest. I try to sing and play at the same time. From the get go. Yeah. Right. And, yep. or if I have already some sort of repetitive, um, uh, chord progression or whatever, maybe I'm tinkering, um, then I'm going to sing gibberish oh, over okay. it uh -huh, just uh -huh. to get like yeah, yeah, yeah. the melody feel just to see like what wants to come out, you know, and then come, come back to so it. I, and, I don't mean to be persistent about yeah. it, but it's just kind of my personal interest so he's so very what, persistent <laughs> so so when you so so um, what i'm hearing is that unless i misheard you the initial idea is often a melodic idea yeah. that's haunting you yes. some some sort of hook and but you don't want to get too far out 
on the melody, you'll try to marry that melodic fragment with some lyrics pretty quickly at the beginning. Yes. Sometimes, yeah. though, it will be... Um, and I've written a lot of songs like this where I'll be journaling, not with the intention to write a song, but right. I'll just be journaling or and I'll go back to it and I'll see, well, oh, there's something there's something here, right? And mm -hmm. then I'll I'll, I'll want to take that bit mm -hmm. and sit down and and okay. and work on it more. But it's but it's it's usually not the like I'm going to write some sort of like poem or right. um cuz I think I just get more inspired by the son by you know sonically versus mm -hmm. Just wor with words, yeah, right. well, I th like I think, sonically and emotionally. I think you can, you can be somewhat of a, uh, you could say, it can be prohibitive to say no. It must be these words to match this melody. Mm. Uh, some, sometimes, mm -hmm. but giving giving yourself a bit of homework, so to speak, mm -hmm. and so just like you said perhaps everyone's process is different, and maybe chasing the melody and then your gibberish approach seems to be apparently working very well. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. but, but you see what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, you know, yeah. finding which way I think I'm, I'm Jonathan mm -hmm. asked me. No, I know some people yeah. who have f f full on poems. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They've finished writing the entire thing. And now they're going back to write the song to the poem. Right. So I'm just now like, I, it really ranges all over the place. I, I have done that where someone sent me poetry or mm -hmm. I just seen a poem that I like that I want to set to music. Mm -hmm. and, and I've done that. Mm -hmm. um, but just for my own music. Um, or, or I've done also where I've worked with a producer with several producers, producers where they've had, they have their whole arrangement already fleshed out. Right. They send it to me. And I'm just top lining, um, yeah. but even that—that's just. That's Could you explain top lining? To yeah, top lining. Um, I mean, I guess it's just c c you're creating the the melody mm -hmm. and and lyrics to um, a track that's already that's already like gotcha. established. Interesting. The music exists. You're the music exists. Yeah, huh. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, right. And it just is needing like the lead part. Basically, it's the lead part. Right. Well, process is something incredibly diverse and very personal mm -hmm. um it's, I, I love hearing that question that jonathan asked about mm -hmm. that because it's, it's so insightful because everyone i think is um some way somehow have ideas they want to crack for themselves and and and, and find an audience for them whichever it is and whichever form and art they are in but um is it true the inspiration from your latest single cameron uh came from a chance encounter with a stranger on the a-train <laughs> yes, that is very true. You do your homework. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was in the sit next car watching through the window. That was me. Just, no, not a, no, I'm just curious. Was it me? You're like, something's happening here. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, this is about uh, maybe a little bit more than a year ago. Um, and I was, yeah, I was taking the train one evening. It was not a very crowded train. This guy, young guy sitting across from me, he had, his, he had a bicycle and he was kind of like down and out. Like his eyes were red, like I say in the song. And um, we just, sort of made eye contact and he starts talking to me or I did. I don't remember really. <laughs> That's always a can of worms in the subway when someone starts talking to you. I know that, that yeah, that happens occasionally. <laughs> but this was a really beautiful moment. Um, and he just, he, he starts telling me he's on his way to rehab and all of his, um, his difficulties with his girlfriend and um, with, with the, the drugs and um, just trying to get back on his feet, his living situation. It was, it was a lot of stuff, you know, but I could just feel like his, his heart was really pure and he really wanted to get out of the, the struggle that he was in. And, um, and I was kind of, I, I didn't know what to say really, mm -hmm. you know, like, what do you say to that? But yeah, so he was, he just transferred to another train. So I just, I gave him a hug. And when you could still do that, I gave him a hug. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I like, I hope, you know, just mm -hmm. wish you well. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't really, maybe I did get his last name, but like I tried looking it up. I couldn't find him basically, mm -hmm. right? And I just was performing the song mm -hmm. at open mics, at, mm -hmm. at, at performances, all this stuff for, for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, the I end the song with you know, hope you're okay, like wondering where you are. Mm -hmm. And so I was, I'm, I'm always like thinking about like, <laughs> I wonder mm -hmm. if I'm ever going to see him again. You know, well, it's an open letter. Maybe he'll answer you. Someday. Well, wait, there is, <laughs> there is an ending to this. Actually, <laughs> this is kind of miraculous. It's really crazy <laughs> that this happened to me. But um, tell us, yeah. So, so I was singing with the Shul Band, right? The Shul of New York. Um, the Shul Band is like the the klezmer is like the, the official band of the shul of new york which is sort of a, a reform renewal um 
shul, synagogue. And um, we were singing by St. Mark's for, for Shabbat services on Friday. The last 10 minutes, someone walks in and like no one ever walks in, you know, just randomly because it's not easy to find. Um, someone walks in and he starts singing the songs even. And um, I'm curious. I walk up over to him afterwards and um, like, how did you end up here? You know, he said he was, he had an AA meeting in the same building, but it was canceled and he followed the music in. And, and then I was like, and I, I just like had this weird feeling like something was going to happen right now. <laughs> I said, what's your name? And he said, Cameron. And immediately I was like, I wrote a song about you. Like, are you <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> Why? What are you doing here? Oh, wow. And people around us were like, do you know each other? I was like, uh, kind of, but not really. <laughs> You're like in your own one person play. Yeah. But, but and Cameron walks into it and it becomes a two person play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it does. That's incredible. It's it was just like one of those moments that I'm going to tell my children and my grandchildren because were you able I to, still just can't believe it. Well, the golden question is: Were you able to play your song for him? Yes. So I did send him the song because I already had it um, recorded, and you know, he said he cried to it. He sent it to his dad, who they weren't talking so much, and like they had a moment, and um, we were in touch a little bit. I I think he's. He, I don't, I'm not sure if he's doing super well right now, but mm -hmm. we're sort of in touch occasionally. Well, art does heal. Yeah. And uh, amazing. Speaking of uh, grandmothers, this is like <laughs> not the most... <laughs> not, where no, that was nice. Where, 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 are you going, where are you going with this one? I have no idea. <laughs> not the smoothest seg. Um, one thing that really popped out from your mini bio here yeah. was the um, project. Yeah. With the Russian Jewish seniors through original music. Mm -hmm. So, do you mind elaborating a bit on that? Sure. Um, I, it's like two years ago, I went to Israel with this group called Rage. They provide programs for Russian Jews like me who have a very unique background because um, typically, like Russian Jews don't really identify as um, with the Jewish community so much, like even in America, just because like I wasn't raised with any religion, and that's quite typical of like Russian Jews coming from communism. Um, so through them, I learned about um, this program called Je Kojeko, um, and they have this fellowship grant where you can basically create your own community project. Um, addressing some of these issues and, you know, addressing the Russian Jewish community. And I had actually written Cameron already. And I thought, hey, wouldn't this be cool to sort of write about other people, right? And write about like my own people and my own heritage and background and learn about mm -hmm. people. And then also, you know, allow for other people to learn like through, through these stories. And then through the songs that I and, and other musicians will create based on these interviews. Hmm. Um, so that was the initial idea and I've been, I've been, um, working on that for a while. Um, so it's a current it. project. It's a current project. Okay. Yeah. It had, it had a snag just because of uh -huh. COVID and okay. not being able sure. to meet. So now we're doing, doing, um, just over the phone interviews. It's really fascinating it people's stories. And, mm -hmm. um, we had a concert, like a, a virtual concert last year, um, with, um, myself, a couple other musicians who improvised pieces based on some of the stories. And the stories are really gripping, you know, like How would they do really that? Intense. Would would the story get told and then they'd start playing or yeah. was it being said while they're playing? What? No, the the latter. So they would have or the sorry, the former. They would someone would would share what okay. the, the real story is and then based on that the, the musicians just go. went off and we had like incredible musicians. And then we had a couple huh. songs that like I have had written a song and I'm about to write more um uh inspired by by one of the interviews and then um some other musicians and we had a, a little bit of talk of like why music is so important in our heritage and like how mm -hmm. during the, the during World War II and during the Holocaust like Jews kept singing you know and they mm -hmm. kept writing yeah. and that was their that was their weapon, basically, because a lot of those songs were preserved, and now there are projects where people are, musicians are, are um, arranging, you know, songs based mm -hmm. on on just like a, um, an acapella, mm -hmm. um, you know, melody that wow. someone sang. So that's why 
that's why I think to me like melody is so important yeah. and like I didn't even realize like make that connection you know but now that I'm delving into this work I'm really making the connection with you know my ancestors my heritage how how melody was so important to them to, yeah. to, for their survival yeah. um well that's be my follow-up question yeah. working with this project other projects like this how has uh, your heritage informed your mm -hmm. work particularly working in pop music <laughs> you know it's it's not what you hear are a lot of heavy russian jewish <laughs> you know, stories through told through pop music exactly right and that was the idea because even for me trying to get into that world of like yiddish music and more religious music um it, it, it's kind of inaccessible right for someone who didn't grow up with it like there's people who grew up with it who knew all the melodies i didn't so I need kind of a uh, an easy an easier way right to to ease into that. And there's a lot of there's like Debbie Friedman, there's a lot of like Jewish artists who made that music accessible um and made it very folky, right? Even like Bob Dylan, you know, made mm -hmm. made that stuff very folky. So my whole intention with this project and really with a lot of the music that I write now because this has become way more important to my life and like something that I want to share with people. Um that that even if I want it to be contemporary, you know, I want it to sound not necessarily mainstream, but I want it to sound like anyone could get into mm -hmm. it. You know, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. welcoming to anyone. And, it, but, but the, the story and the, the, the foundation behind it is something like very mm -hmm. meaningful. And, um, you know, whether that's some sort of wisdom being passed or whatever, mm -hmm. but I want it to be still in this very colloquial way mm -hmm. to like, that it's almost deceiving, mm -hmm. you know? So I, <laughs> It's, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely become my sort of my mission in the last in the last um, year or so with my music. Um, so Tatiana, excuse me, um, we're hoping that you have a few more songs. Yes, uh, to I, play for us. I sure um, do. Before you do that, could you tell us uh, what we're going to hear? The titles and. Okay, so this next one is going to be called. It's called "Found Yourself," um, and. Uh, it's actually, it's on, uh, it's on my band camp. Okay. You look me up at Tatiana Calco. Um, and this is something I wrote when I was starting or <laughs> I guess I was kind of in the middle of like a spiritual path and, um, uncovering some, some insights about, about my past, about relationships that I've had. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I just I wrote the song about it. It's what came out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and um and then the last one I'm going to play is called A Little Bit of You. And that one I wrote a, a while ago. It's on my um it's on my EP. Mm -hmm. It's out now. The EP is called Yellow and Blue and the song is called A Little Bit of You. And I think it was kind of my mantra at the time of like dating around and not, you know, it's like I guess I believe in fate very much it's it's a complicated issue but to the extent that if i meet someone and there's a connection like I, i'm very curious to see like wh why why has fate brought us together you know what lessons can we learn and I, and so the song's kind of about that well let's listen to two more songs from tatiana calco <laughs> Nothing is the same 
Then you learn that happiness is attainable when you know to call it by its name. People think God is goes unrecognized and hiding in a church or under black robes of the abiding. Don't believe in the vain or rehearsed. You may find God, but you must lose yourself first. You must lose
That was awesome. Um, <laughs> where can people listen to more of your songs? Sure. So um, Cameron and uh, my EP and a couple other songs are actually on my Spotify uh, at just Tatiana Calco. Mm -hmm. And you could just search Tatiana Calco into Spotify, into Bandcamp, into YouTube. Um, should I spell it? Go or, for it. Okay, it's like. T-A-T-Y-A-N-A-K-A-L-K-O. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have a SoundCloud that has a lot, a lot of other like things that I haven't you know, released officially, more like electronic or whatever things I'm working on. Mm. Um, and then on my Instagram as well, at Tatiana Calco, um, I do a bunch of little videos and other things on there. You're quite the promoter. I've seen it. It's good yeah? stuff. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> Well, listeners, you can find those links up on Inwood Artworks On Air's uh, website. Uh, thanks again, Tatiana, for oh, coming and visiting with us today and sharing your music. It was great to hear you live. Ah, it's been yeah. such a pleasure and playing live for you guys. Yeah. Well, this has great been stuff. another live and local edition of Inwood Artworks On Air. It's where we meet the musicians, filmmakers, writers, theater makers, and artists of all stripes who make their home in what we call here upstate Manhattan. If you have a moment, please show us some love right now by rating and reviewing this podcast on Apple Podcasts. It really helps. Uh, you can also find it on Spotify next to Tatiana's page. Uh, big thanks to 809 Restaurant and Lounge for hosting us at theheightsites.com for great local uptown promotional support. Be sure to follow us on social media at Inwood Artworks to keep up with all that we do. That includes the Inwood Film Festival, Filmworks Al Fresco, pop up art galleries, live performances, and so much more. Um, you can support On Air and all of our programming by making a tax free donation at inwoodartworks.nyc backslash donate. Inwood Artworks On Air is made possible with funding from the NYC and Company Foundation with support from Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer and the Niska Electronic Media and Film Grant Program in partnership with Wave Farm Media Arts Assistance Fund and support of Governor Andrew Cuomo and the New York State Legislature. From the top of Manhattan and the bottom of our hearts, thank you for tuning in. This is Aaron Sims. I'm Jonathan Bell. For Inwood Artworks On Air.